I'm not going to forget that. I've never had an entire audience just go, forget you! This was a publicity stunt. She had her t-shirt there ready to go. It seems to me like an absolute publicity stunt. And you hit the nail on the head, Emily, right at the top when you said this is all about her. The national anthem is about us, about our whole country, all of us. And she chose to make this about her so she would get the headlines, and it is such a disgrace. Old quarterback Colin Kaepernick took a knee as the national anthem was played in San Diego. And he wasn't alone. San Francisco 49ers teammate Eric Reed kneeled beside him in solidarity. And the controversial protest is spreading. This time it was Seattle Seahawks cornerback Jeremy Lane who refused to stand during the anthem. January of 2006, that's when you became an American citizen. How about this day? What did that mean to you that day? Special. People, they don't know how hard that is. How many people die? How many people open the thing? How many people want to be American? It's a very honor for me to do that. And I look at them as that they've never had the right kind of, of education about what their country really means to them. You know what's horrible? When they kill our black brothers and sisters, hermanos, that's what's horrible. But we did lose 2,000 men on the beach. I said men, I shouldn't say men. 2,000 kids. We were all kids. You feel, you feel kind of sad sometimes when you're at you're the stadium and they play the national anthem. A few guys still keep their hats on. They don't stand up. Whenever that happens, I walk over and hand them their hat. Lambert saved at least 15 men on D-Day, pulling many of them to shore and seeking shelter behind a large rock. How did you keep going? You really didn't have a choice there. You either drown or you move forward. He kept going after shrapnel later tore through his thigh. And then while working to save another soldier, the two suddenly were pinned under the ramp of a boat bringing in more Americans. You go through what I went through and been blown up later and put out on limited service at 19 years old. And you got that to add to it too, you know. Well, I've got PTSD, so you let me give you an idea how I feel when things happen. And uh, PTSD don't leave you either, so. You, you hate to know that your buddy died, but still, you know that we, that's what we want, we're going for. We knew whenever we stepped out of that plane, we didn't have a way back. Genocide and war, five, six, seven, eight, America was down. I went in the second day after D-Day into Normandy. I was, oh boy, 22. I went to my boss and I said, look, I'm going to have to go, but I want to. And I talked a little with Mama and she said, Bob, I want you to go, but she said, I'll miss you. So I went down and I enlisted. I felt like I had to go. I wanted to protect my family and my wife. Hey, you're really emotional right now. Why are you so emotional and cheering up out now? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> opportunities, man. Opportunities. Opportunity opened the door for me and being great. I've been living in this country for a long time, giving my family a great cause and open the door for them to be who they are.